Today, some disturbing trends. Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Today I want to look at fresh data on wages, US bond rates and insolvencies in Australia. First, yesterday as we discussed, the RBA said that the trajectory of income growth was uncertain and in fact they were less bullish than previously. And today on cue, the latest ABS data on wages growth showed a further fall compared to last time. In fact, you can mount an argument that the federal budget is already shot as a result. In the March quarter, the seasonally adjusted wage price index rose 0.5% and 2.1% through the year. Seasonally adjusted private sector wages rose 1.9% and public sector wages grew 2.3% through the year to March. And in Victoria and Tasmania, they both recorded the highest through the year wage growth of 2.3% and the Northern Territory recorded the lowest at 1.1%. And in original terms through the year, wage growth to the March quarter ranged from 1.4% for the mining industry to 2.7% for the healthcare and social assistance industry. And bear in mind, this weak result comes despite the Fair Work Commission's June 2017 decision, which lifted the minimum wage 3.3% and to $18.29 from July and flowed to around 2.3 million workers. This means that the annual wages growth number contains this artificial artefact, and so the underlying growth rate would be even lower. And by the way, you can argue this metric overstates the true picture as we see a lift in low paid jobs away from higher paid areas like mining, which the ABS data does not adjust for. For comparison, the average compensation for employees from the national accounts, which is to December 2017, is tracking even lower at around 1.3%. Either way, wages growth is looking pretty sick and there is no evidence of any sort of rebound so far. Next, we turn to US government 10-year bond yields, which rose to their highest level since 2011 yesterday, and the two-year yield hit its highest since 2008, as traders continue to price in a faster pace of rate hikes from the Federal Reserve this year. The yield on 10-year US Treasury notes rose to a high of 3.095%, the highest level since August 2011. And bond yields move inversely to prices. Two-year Treasury yields rose as high as 2.56%, the highest since 2008, and the yield on the 30-year Treasury note is also higher, at 3.191%. So rates are higher across the board. These yields were boosted after a report on US retail sales for April indicated that consumer spending is on track to rebound after a soft patch in the first quarter. The Commerce Department reported that retail sales rose 0.3% in April, while the prior monthly figure was revised up to 0.8% from a previously reported 0.6%. And in fact, yields have climbed higher since the Fed said in its May meeting that inflation is moving closer to its 2% target. The Fed raised rates in March and projected two more rate hikes this year, although many investors see three hikes as possible. And US mortgage rates also moved higher. Here is the latest chart showing the cumulative rises in recent months. So more pressure on local bank funding rates are ahead. And finally, the Australian Financial Security Authority released the Personal Insolvency Activity Statistics to the March quarter 2018. In state and territory terms, personal insolvencies reached a record quarterly high in Western Australia at 1,020, and the highest level since September 2014 in New South Wales at 2,372. Total personal insolvencies in the March quarter increased slightly by 0.1% to 7,910, compared to the March quarter. And within that, bankruptcies decreased by 1.8%, debt agreements increased by 3.9%, and personal insolvency agreements decreased by 59.3%. Quarterly total personal insolvencies remain below the historical national peaks reached in 2008-9, where more than 9,000 personal insolvencies were recorded. But Interest rates are now lower, and employment is also below that in 2009-10, so the insolvency rates are significant, and yet another sign of stress in the system. So standing back, income growth is to remain contained, as expected, and against a backcloth of higher US rates, which will flow onto higher bank funding costs here. 
So expect to see even higher levels of mortgage stress and personal insolvencies in the months ahead. These are not signs of a booming economy, at least in my book. If you like what you've seen here today, please like the post and add a comment or a question. I read them all. And if you want to join the growing band of subscribers who receive alerts when we release new posts, do subscribe now. And if you've already subscribed, many thanks. I really appreciate your support and participation. I'm Martin North, the Principal Analyst at Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.